Welcome back to the garage. My name is Zane, and in today's video, if you believe it or not, it's finally time to tear into the old yellow F600 truck. It's going to be scavenged of all of the parts that I need off of it for the Project Atlas build. If you're not familiar with that build, I will leave it linked in the video description below if you want to go ahead and check out the previous videos that I've done in this series. I'm not going to lie, it's been about a year and a half since I've done one. A lot of stuff off camera keeping me busy, but now that the property's cleaned up, it's time to start working on these projects yet again. One other thing I want to kind of stress at the beginning of this video, if you're on the fence about subscribing, just go ahead and do so. Not tomorrow, not after breakfast, now! Alright, hopefully you got a laugh out of the Shawshank meme that I just put in there. I would never ask somebody to subscribe in a mean fashion. But anyways, if you're thinking about it, just keep it in the back of your mind. It would help me out a lot more than you would ever imagine. But without further delay, let's tear into this old truck. First order of business is to get in here with a wrench and take apart the front and rear drive shafts. That way the truck rolls easier and I can move it around. If you watch the beginning of the video, you'll realize when I pulled the truck from the fence line over there, none of these wheels moved. And I'm 99% sure that's because the transfer case back here is locked up. So we'll go over that in a few minutes, but right now let's take the drive shafts out of here. You might be wondering why I'm using the opened end of the wrench instead of the boxed end part. Well, that's because it won't fit on there. There's not enough clearance. So sometimes you have to do things the old fashioned way. go struggling a bit with it but you know what I'm not an expert there's a lot of self-proclaimed experts on this platform that would have the same issue but they just cut that out of the video wasn't as bad as I thought, but there was some kind of pressure. And then of course, it's the same process for the drive shaft at the rear of the transfer case. There's that one. So there you have the rear drive shaft. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and grab some tape and tape around these bearings so they don't just fly apart and make a mess in the shop. Also, I need to get in here and label this as the rear drive shaft. Since this truck is four wheel drive, it'll be less of a guessing game in the long run. Just something to keep in mind. And of course, can't find the roll of duct tape anywhere. But this will work for now.
Well, they never said building something cool would be easy. Or at least in my case, deconstructing something. I need to get in here and remove the rear axle, leaf spring, and lift block assemblies because I don't want to take all of that apart. I want to just be able to put that underneath the other frame that I've got. I can remove the rear leaf spring by knocking this pin through the back side and that leaf spring will just drop down through there once I lift the frame. Again, you can see that I could knock this pin all the way through. That's not the case on the front side. Couldn't be that easy. There is a pin that I could strike, but it goes right into the frame. So my next plan of attack, I guess, is to torch off every single one of these rivets that hold the spring hangers on. I thought that would be an easy job. Turns out it's not. And then I thought, well, I'll actually get around to pulling the front bumper and winch off of here. Then I get down and look. And somebody has welded it to the frame. There's two bolts right here that I could easily remove. But that weld's going to be a little bit difficult to get to. Not to mention that. There's also a weld right here and a weld on the back side of there. So I'll more than likely have to pull the grill out of the truck just so I can get in there with a grinder and cut those welds. What a mess. It's fairly early in the morning on Saturday. So while I think on this, before I roll the torch card out here, I think I'll get inside and clean up the inside of the frame. You can see all this wiring. I've also got an air tank for the Hydrovac brakes. I'll get in here and remove the yellow wire that runs all the way to the back for the tail lights, clean the inside of this frame up a little bit, and then possibly move on to the transfer case and get that removed. I don't know if you can see this or not in the video, but these lines are rotten. They're steel and they're falling apart. It's nothing that I'm going to reuse, so just need to get it out of the way.
let me take this screwdriver and I'll show you how rotten this old frame is. There's an inner layer and then the outer layer that goes over the outside has so much rust built up in between that it has totally warped and bowed this frame from all the way from behind the cab right to about the front spring hanger where this outer layer stops. Later on, I might take the grinder and cut this outer layer off and then we'll see how rotten the inside is. But both sides are that way. I don't know if you can tell, but the frame isn't sitting flat. It's actually warped up from where that rust jacking has pried both of those pieces apart. I removed the step along with the hydrovac that was attached to the driver's side of the truck frame. Now it's time to remove the fuel tank on the passenger side. It's got this L-shaped bracket that attaches to the frame, goes underneath the fuel tank, and there is a fuel tank strap that goes over the outside. Up here, there's a bolt on the back and on the front that holds this tank on there. And I was really hoping not to have to cut any of that, but I'll show you what I found underneath. Much like everything else on this truck, both of these fuel tank straps are ate up with rust. So I'm going to get the grinder in here, right where the L-shaped bracket ends, and just cut the strap. The reason is because that's the end of it. It's got this bolt with a nut and it is ate up with rust so bad that's never going to come apart unless I use the torch on this. And since we're laying underneath a fuel tank right now, torch probably wouldn't be a good idea. So I'm going to get down here with a grinder, cut both of these straps, and get the fuel tank out of the way. And of course, it couldn't be that easy. I've got to remove that fitting because it's hitting on the rocker panel. So I'll take that off and then this tank should slide out of the brackets. Don't forget to put the fitting back in here. That way I don't get any rainwater in this tank. The bottom of it's a little bit rusty, but not as bad as half the fuel tanks on some of these trucks sitting around here, so I'll probably end up reusing this on something else. 
But now that the tank's out of the way, I can get to these L brackets and take them off the frame. So that's what's next. exhaust really isn't doing much for this truck especially on the driver's side it's completely rotted apart but again look how bad that frame is rust jacked underneath there's actually a spot back here that I can stick my entire hand in between the original frame of the truck and the outer liner that's how much this is rust jacked apart Ever since day one, whenever I bought this yellow F600 truck, I planned on taking it apart and using what I needed on the Project Atlas build. Now sometimes projects change. Originally, I was going to use 99% of this truck and just swap the cab and drivetrain and everything over to that rollback frame. But instead, I'm going to use a 12-valve Cummins and I've got the cab off a 1964 white Mustang semi-truck. I think that will look a lot neater in my opinion. I do like Ford trucks, but I've never been a fan of this cab style, not to make people mad in the comment section. But I got this truck running and driving on camera. I done another video where I removed the flatbed with the high lift, and I planned on doing a few more videos, but something happened along the way that kept me from moving this truck around. Long story short, the problem lies in the transfer case. So right about in the middle of the truck, you've got the transfer case, and it gets power from the engine through the transmission drive shaft goes from the transmission to the input of the transfer case and of course this splits the power and you got a drive shaft that runs to the front axle and then a drive shaft that runs to the rear axle the input let me grab this and show you has over a quarter inch of play before either one of these try to even move. Now I can grab this and turn it, but if I roll it around enough times, at one spot it gets tight and doesn't want to move. There's a little bit of noise back here because this cover has some dirt behind it, but the problem is right there. There's this, I don't even know the technical name for it offhand, this bearing cap on the back of the transfer case. It's got six bolts that holds it to the transfer case. And right up there, let me grab the screwdriver, there's a wadded up bearing race just floating around inside. Grab a light, 
You can see down inside, just maybe, there's a few ball bearings rolling around in there that are playing an industrial game of pinball, wreaking havoc inside of this transfer case. Not to mention, with this piece being broken out here, there's also a split that runs all the way up to the top. In that video that I removed the flatbed from this truck, I drove it from my field up here close to the garage. It was actually sitting right over in here. And when I parked it, there was a huge puddle of gear oil underneath. And that's when I pretty much decided to not move this truck around until I could figure out what was wrong. But the more I think about this, and I need your help in the comment section if you don't mind for people that know these four-wheel drives a lot more than I do, this front axle, when I moved the truck closer to the garage earlier in the video, the front wheels were moving. The back were not. Now there's a slim chance that the brakes are just locked up, but I don't think that's the case. Either the transfer case made the rear axle go bad, or the rear axle made the transfer case go bad. When I removed the drive shaft back here earlier in the video, you can see that drive shaft jumped out of there. There was some kind of a bind that this four-wheel drive system was in. And if something went wrong inside of here, when I drove the truck, it could have been sending more power to the front end than was going to the rear end, and something just got in a bind and wasn't happy. And you can see the result of that. So I'm going to need some help in the comment section if you don't mind. But as bad as I hate to say it, it looks like I might be looking for parts for this transfer case and maybe even a third member for the rear end. That will do it for today. I originally planned on having one single video on tearing this truck completely apart, but honestly there's so much other stuff going on project-wise that that's not going to happen. The next video will more than likely be working on the Jeep frame yet again. I got the front bumper that's going on the front of my second gen Dodge sandblasted and primed. So there's a local company that will do the sandblasting for me, so look forward to that video. There'll probably be a Dustin video here or there as well about working on the tractor or going over the new shop that he built. There's quite a bit of stuff in the future, so just keep an eye out for new videos or go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the new videos. But anyways, the next one will be either removing the axles and transfer case from the truck or removing the cab and drive line from this chassis. So keep an eye out for those. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you made it all the way this far, I greatly appreciate it. And always remember that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or out in your driveway on a piece of cardboard. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about what you're working on. Whatever that may be. Now that this video's over, how about you go outside and work on something? Anyways, my name is Zane, and I hope to catch you next time.